Welcome to the first lecture video of many for trigonometry. I absolutely love trigonometry and I hope that you enjoy this semester. We're going to start at the very beginning in section 1.1 with angles and degree measure. This is a very simple and fundamental section, but it's going to form the foundation for a lot of more complex topics that we'll discuss this semester. In section 1.1, we're going to be focusing on an introduction to angles. Let's get started with a definition. In geometry, as you probably already know, a ray is defined as a point on a line together with all of the points on one side of that line. Then an angle is defined as the union of two rays with a common endpoint called the vertex. Let's add a visual to this definition. Example 1. In the space below, construct ray AB and angle ABC. Then identify two different ways to name angle ABC. So starting with ray AB, notice the arrow points in one direction. It goes from A to B. So when we construct ray AB, we're going to indicate direction from point A to and through point B. So this is an illustration of what we would call ray AB. Order is important when we name a ray. To construct angle ABC, do notice that the letter B is in the middle. Therefore, B is going to be the vertex. So we're going to have ray BC. And we can imagine rotating that ray and fixing it at another point called A to define angle ABC. Another way to name this angle is simply by using the vertex in the middle. We could also call this angle B, or we could name it in the other direction, angle CBA. The vertex B is the focus of naming that angle. Note that angles are often named using Greek letters. You'll definitely want to familiarize yourself with the capital and lowercase forms of the Greek letters below. We will use many of these Greek letters to name angles in trigonometry. Some common ones will be alpha, specifically the lowercase alpha, lowercase beta, and lowercase gamma. Those are often used for naming angles. In addition, we'll often use theta to represent an angle. But as a student of mathematics, you'll definitely want to be familiar with more than just those four letters. For example, in Calculus 1, you'll use delta and epsilon quite a bit, especially when you cover the definition of a limit. When you get to differential equations, you'll see lambda quite often. In statistics, you'll use lowercase mu. And at this point, if you haven't seen the lowercase pi, I don't know where you've been. Also, in calculus, you're going to see the uppercase sigma used quite a bit. And the lowercase sigma is used in statistics. Tau is often used in differential equations. Phi, or phi and psi are often used in calculus, specifically calculus 3. And the lowercase omega will be used in trigonometry, in physics, and also in differential equations. So it's a good idea to be familiar with these Greek letters and how to write them. To continue establishing our foundation, let's talk about some more basic definitions. Here we're further going to develop the anatomy of an angle. An angle can be formed by rotating one ray away from a fixed ray. The fixed ray is called the initial side, and the rotated ray is called the terminal side. Notice in the picture down below, we start with an initial side and we rotate through an angle and stop at the terminal side. So in a direction of rotation will be implied with the measure of our angles. Sometimes we study angles as they relate to circles. An angle whose vertex is the center of a circle is called a central angle. 
and the arc of the circle through which the terminal side moves. So imagine your initial side and rotating that angle through, rotating that ray through the angle. The arc that is intercepted on the circle is called the intercepted arc. Very straightforward. And the third definition that we're going to cover is a very important one, simple but fundamental. An angle in standard position An angle in standard position is located in a rectangular coordinate system with the vertex at the origin and the initial side on the positive x-axis. So if we take the angle alpha that we began examining and we attach it to a rectangular coordinate system, that is upon an x-y coordinate system, and attach the vertex at the origin, then the initial side will be on the positive x-axis and the terminal side rotates away from that positive x-axis. That's called an angle in standard position. So, so far trigonometry is pretty basic and straightforward. These definitions are simple and easy to understand, but very important for building a strong foundation.